I came up with the idea for Face in the Crowd four or five years ago. I'd had this personal thing with crowds for years, and it was getting worse. It wasn't getting better. It was this thing of getting in front of crowds and just having this really visceral reaction, overwhelming to the sense of just being completely out of control. This was my first time having a set built and shooting in a studio. If we're gonna have all this production, we wouldn't wanna miss this opportunity to have some nice moving images of the crowds. So we got a great cinematographer, Ross Richardson, and if we're gonna have these moving images, we might as well make it into a story. I needed a really good actress. That led us to Elizabeth Banks. I had this idea of somebody that felt vulnerable and beautiful and familiar someone that we'd want to kind of follow through these crowds. I wanted it to be strange and awkward and constantly weaving in and out of reality and fiction. This was by far the biggest production I've ever been on. We had this massive space to shoot in, four sets going all at once. While one set was being taken down, another one was being put up in its place. 6 a.m. to 10 at night, 350 extras. Carloads of props and clothing. Insane, ambitious, nonstop madness. I do all this pre-production and I do sketches and I do outlines and I have an idea for the entire day of shooting. I'll get on set and all of that goes out the window and I'm just kind of in the moment and we see what happens. For the film I wanted to focus on the two sides of a crowd, the individuals that make up the crowd, their interesting stories and their life experiences, and then the other side of the crowd, which could be just a sea of anonymous faces. Just be kind of an overwhelming sense of movement and texture around Elizabeth. I wanted her to be sort of the light in, in the center of the confusion. I did have a general narrative for Elizabeth. And then the crowd, we just decided we were going to put it together later. And I think that was a really good way of working on this particular story. During shooting, I would pick out certain faces and have them mock up certain characters. Some of them I would give certain characteristics to, like the man with the lisp. I never knew that she was in the business. And then some of them, I would just sit them down and ask them real questions and get real answers from them. My marriage was broken. When my mom was sick. I'm not friendly with any of my neighbors. I wasn't sure what to expect from any of their stories, but they just opened up to us. I don't know if it was the lights and the camera and the dark, small space that we put them in, or if it's that's how people are. That's genuinely how most people are. They sit down and they want to talk about life. It was surprising and it felt really genuine and beautiful and they were really vulnerable. It was really eye-opening listening to these people because it, it really got me to see how we find ways to connect through our stories. I just wasn't expecting it to be so heartfelt. The film and the photographs were shot at exactly the same time. They're really meant to communicate the same thing from totally different perspectives. It actually got me to look at why both mediums are important to me, and I can't really do one without the other now. The idea for the three screen came about when I started working with my editor, Matt Chessy, having a screen on either side of you and then one in front of you when you walk into the room. It was really able to capture the movement of a crowd and the chaos that it can turn into, it really felt like it needed to be something that you were a part of and surrounded by. This series was a culmination of everything that I've been working towards. It just led up to this crowd series. And I'm not even done with it yet. I almost feel like I just hit the tip of the iceberg and there's so much more for me to discover with crowds.